devotions meant to bring you the peace that surpasses understanding. I am Pastor Peter Heckert, the Associate Pastor here at St. James Lutheran in Lafayette, Indiana. And tonight, as we're getting back into the swing of things, I know it's been a while, and I trust all of you had a wonderful Christmas, if for no other reason than the yearly remembrance that the incarnate eternal Logos, the eternal Word of God, took on flesh for you. That's enough reason to celebrate, if for no other reason. But tonight, <clears throat> we're going to be doing our daily prayer at the close of the day. We're also going to be taking a look at one of my favorite, <laughs> really one of my favorite passages of Scripture uh, in Romans chapter 9, or not Romans chapter 9, Romans chapter 3, uh, kind of the... Yeah, kind of the chapter that gave Luther, if any, if there ever was any aha moment, Romans chapter 3 would definitely be right up there with it. But then we're also going to hear from someone <clears throat> that we haven't heard from in a, at least, I think, in the entire time that I've been doing this. Um, we're going to be hearing uh, from one of our Lutheran forefathers, uh, a contemporary of C.F.W. Walther. I think he might have been a few years earlier than him. But um, Johannes Conrad Wilhelm Leia, otherwise known very um, affectionately as Wilhelm Leia, wonderful pastor in the early to mid 18th or 1800s, the 19th century, and he's going to actually give a little bit of commentary on what Paul writes about in Romans chapter three. So that's what's coming up, and as we always do, we make our beginning in the name of our triune God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Now, as I said, the reading is from Romans chapter 3, verses 19 to 31. And this is what Paul tells the Roman Christians. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But, the, but now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No. But by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith, apart from works of the law. Or is God the God of Jews only? Is he not the God of Gentiles also? Yes, of Gentiles also. Since God is one who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith. Do we then overthrow the law by this faith? By no means. On the contrary, we uphold the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, <clears throat> we'll read what Leah has to say about this passage. He's usually pretty spot on, so I don't know if it's going to require an, any additional or um, if it would, if I feel like I want to talk a little bit about it. But... In any case, we'll read it and see what he says. And if it suffices, it suffices. So here's what Leah writes. You desire to go to confession and to the, Lord's to the Holy Lord's Supper and ask, How should I begin? How might God look upon my works favorably so that I will be blessed? 
so that I will receive the body and blood of the Lord, not to my judgment, but to my soul's salvation. Listen to the answer, which the Apostle Paul gives in 1 Corinthians 11. A man, he says, ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. But you ask, how should I examine myself? What do I examine myself for? The apostle holds the law before your eyes and says to you, from the law comes recognition of sin. Therefore, look into the law. In this mirror of the law and compare the purity of the law with the purity, rather, the impurity of your heart and changes so that you will receive the first grace, namely recognition of your sins. But because the blind man can recognize neither what is beautiful nor what is ugly, he calls upon the Lord, have mercy upon me. Because human beings, according to their nature, cannot correctly recognize their sins, you should turn to the Father of light, from whom all good and perfect gifts come from above, and to the Son, who is that light, who enlightens all human beings, and pray, Lord God, Holy Spirit, you are the true and constant support in every need, a spirit of truth and promise, God's finger, the water of life, a heavenly fire, which warms cold hearts and ignites them with true love for God. You have revealed yourself to the apostles with wonderful gifts and a powerful wind and fiery tongues. We ask you now, therefore, to come into our hearts, to strengthen and gladden our ignorant consciences. Sanctify us with your blessing and be unto us the holy assurance of our redemption and our salvation. Amen. So, <clears throat> yes, that is about uh, quite a bit about Romans 3. I know he quotes 1 Corinthians 11, and it's in the context of the Lord's Supper and properly examining oneself before they go up and partake of Christ's true body and blood. That said, <clears throat> consider what Paul had written in Romans. He's talking about, yes, the righteousness of God is through faith. It is faith. It is trust in his grace. It's favorable disposition for you, to you, not based on what you've done, but because of what Jesus did. A good way to think of it... Um, I can't remember which professor said this, and I can't remember, I can't even remember if it was at college or whether it was at seminary. <clears throat> One of my professors has been wont to say, when the Father beholds one of those who are baptized in his name, he doesn't see the sinner. He sees the son who is, or the son or the daughter who is soaked, covered in the his only begotten son's blood. So he doesn't see you. He doesn't see your sin. All he sees is Jesus. He sees his son. And that's why he declares you not just not guilty, but innocent. He counts that righteousness, that, that goodness to you, not because of anything you've done, but because you are covered in the blood of the Lamb. That's that's one of the beautiful things about it. And that's why <clears throat> that's why we do have the recognition that God's law is a good thing. It is. We we love his law. We know that it is good. Indeed, Paul even tells us, uh, do we then overthrow the law by this faith? By no means. Meganoita. That's the Greek phrase that he uses, and he uses it all over the place in his letters. Meganoita. May it never be, by no means. On the contrary, we uphold the law. Why? Because of what Leah wrote, which is just a reflection of what Paul writes in other places in his epistles. He talks about the fact that we need the law. Christians need the law. The world needs the law for, <laughs> for many reasons. <clears throat> we need the law for a very specific reason. We as Christians need the law in order to have its perfect precepts held before us at all times so that we can recognize, I can't do this. 
I cannot keep these commandments. It is too high for me. I am a lousy, rotten, no good, stinking sinner. Thank you, Tom Fire Dog. <clears throat> that is the reality of it. We need the law so that we are able to see that we need Jesus. We need both. We need law and we need gospel. If you only had the law, you'd just be crushed by it. That's all it can do. Ultimately, when it comes down to it, the law is good, but we are so not good, it kills us by its demands and requirements to adhere to it perfectly. We can't do it. We can't accomplish it. So we are crushed by it. But if we only have the gospel... You don't see that you're a sinner who's in need of Jesus. Okay, Jesus died for me. So, that's the eventual mentality that you would adopt. That's why we do need both law and gospel. Leah knew it, and Paul knew it. He knew it very well. This is the same Paul who in the same letter would say, um, for the good that I want to do, I do not do Yet the evil that I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Wretched man that I am, who will save me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, we're going to resume the rest of our service here by praying together the Lord's Prayer, and then we'll move into the rest of our prayers. So, we pray together the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, the protector of all who trust in you, strengthen our faith and give us courage to believe that in your love you will rescue us from all adversities. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord. And in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we pray together Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. My friends, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God, the almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Be with and abide with you all this night, every night, every day. I pray that you have a wonderful day tomorrow. Get a good night's sleep for the work that is before you for tomorrow. And of course, I'll see you on Thursday. Same bad time, same bad place. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great night.